When setting up triple integrals, the first thing we're going to have to deal with is the ordering of the variables. We saw when we were doing double integrals that the order sometimes makes a difference. This is definitely the case with triple integrals. And so let's do an example where we look at all the different ways to integrate over a certain nice solid region, in this case, a three simplex or a tetrahedron given in the positive octant where X, Y, and Z are bigger than or equal to zero and bounded above by the inequality 6X plus 3Y plus 2Z less than or equal to six. So what does that look like? Well, if I consider the equation of that plane, 6x plus 3y plus 2z equals 6, then that intersects the x, y, and z axes at certain points. We can solve for those locations by, for example, setting y and z equal to zero and solving for x equals one. If we do that with the other axes, then we see where those intersection points are. We use what we know about those two inequalities to conclude that we get this tetrahedral shape, this shape that is formally called a three simplex. Okay, so once we've got that, now to do the triple integral to set that up, it is going to be helpful for us to project this down to the three coordinate planes, to project to the x, y plane, where we get a triangle, and to the x, z plane, where we get a different triangle, and to the y, z plane, where we get a different triangle still. Now, the way that we get those, and in particular, the way we get the equations for the lines given by the hypotenuses of these triangles is to set variables equal to zero in the equation of that plane. So for example, in the xy plane, set z equal to zero and we get 6x plus 3y equals six. Now, let's say we want to set up a triple integral in a particular order, let's say x, y, z. So we integrate first with respect to x, then with respect to y, then with respect to z. Now, what we need to do is given that we want to integrate out x first, we fix y and z to be a constant. And having done so, we then solve for the limits on x. Now, it's pretty easy to see that the lower limit for x is zero. What about the upper limit? So to do that, we look at the equation for the plane and we think of y and z as being constants. Then we solve for x. So moving the 3y and the 2z over to the right-hand side, we get x equals 1 minus y over 2 minus z over 3 for the upper limits. Now, next we have to integrate out in y. So what we do is we look at the projection to the yz plane. This is now just like with a double integral. We assume z to be a constant and then we get the limits on y. The lower limit being clearly zero, the upper limit being two minus two thirds z using the equation for that line in the plane. And then finally, we integrate from zero to three along the z direction. Okay, that's one way of doing it. What about the other ways? Well, let's say we integrate first with respect to z, then y, then x. That's going to follow the same pattern. You could and should do all the possible permutations of variables in order to see how many different ways you can set up this triple integral.